there's a chapter where you liken the megaverse to Everett's many worlds theory. And something that I find interesting there is that in the many worlds theory, the there's only wave one wave function and it evolves deterministically. It, it evolves by equations. The, it evolves by equations. Right. Yes. But it is deterministic. The equations have solutions. It's, uh, I wouldn't, it's not, the, I don't want to use the word deterministic because we usually mean by that something a little different. Mean, we mean that the results of experiments are deterministic. But yes, I know what you mean. The wave function evolves according to the Schrodinger equation, which is a definite equation which produces definite uh, results. Mm -hmm. yeah. But something I, I also find interesting is I spoke, I mentioned Eric Berlin before we started, I spoke to a, Lawrence Krauss, and I'm going to group you in with them in that you think, oh it, it, in, in just this case, they think that they're much more interested in forward-facing contemporary physics than continuing to dwell on the interpretations of quantum mechanics. Which I don't know that I'm in that class. Oh, you don't? No. I said I was in a... No. Um, no. I... I I spend some amount of time being puzzled and trying to think what it, uh, what uh, what might be the right. Uh, I just don't have anything to say. Okay. Um, my friend De Tuft. Yes. I'm sure you know his name. He's a of one course. of the great physicists of the second half of the 20th century. Of course. Gerard Gerard De Tuft. He has come to the conclusion that uh, that the world really must be deterministic, and. Um, has this collection of ideas which would allow a deterministic world to have the statistical properties of a quantum mechanical world. I admire him so much that I'm yeah. very reluctant to dismiss, and I, I, I understand his questions, I understand what he's thinking. I don't think he's right, but to my mind, he's the deepest of the thinkers in this. Uh. I have a, a nice anecdote about him. One, I, I started the Black Hole War this morning, so I just read that he's, he's six years younger than you, but you've always admired him for his, especially his mathematical acumen. Well, it's not his mathematical acumen. It's but his that depth, it. his period, depth. depth as a physicist. But I've had a, a, a somewhat lengthy email correspondence with him. Oh, good. And. He is not interested in doing interviews because he thinks that it is very important to be extremely precise when one conveys one's work in physics. So he's willing to do text interviews, yeah. but he doesn't like to do them orally, which I, I find very interesting. Okay, well, I like to do them because I enjoy them. I enjoy the process. And, um, uh, yeah, uh, Hooft is, uh, is not a big talker. But, um, but he, of all the physicists that I knew, together with Feynman, I didn't know Einstein, I didn't know Dirac. I knew Dirac a little bit, but I didn't know him well enough to... Um, it hoofed, and Feynman, to me, were uh, a, a class of their own. And, uh,